former Illini Stephen Bardo, he has a YouTube channel and I subscribe to it. I leave comments. We get into it sometimes, but it's nothing but respect. I have my thoughts. He has his thoughts. And you guys know me. I have strong thoughts. I call it like I see it. And we can go back and look at my videos. And I've always been right. Show me a video where I've been wrong. I'm always right. So I just see it as I see it. Now, with that said, Stephen Bardo, he's going to talk about Coleman Hawkins. And I'm going to explain to him and everyone else that it's the people who built up Coleman Hawkins into something he never was. That's the problem. So let's listen to Stephen talk about Coleman Hawkins, and I'm going to comment on it. Here's the, here's the narrative, Lana Nation. I want you guys to consider with Coleman Hawkins, right? When we think about um, he's an NBA prospect, right? We hit Stop that right there. That is the problem right there. NBA prospect. For those of you that say this foolishness, let me ask you something. Is it his rebounding? The man can't even average 10 rebounds a game in college. Is it his scoring? <laughs> he can't score. Is it his great three-point shooting? No. Is it his great dribbling? No. Is it his great passing? No. He's a turnover machine. Like I've always said, tell me what he does as a basketball player that NBA teams want. His defense, that white kid drove on him the entire game. What defense? Get out of here. Like I said, for the people out there that say this stupid stuff that he's an NBA prospect, in what way? What does he do? There literally is nothing about his game that the NBA needs. The NBA needs somebody who can't make a three. The NBA needs somebody who can't rebound. The NBA needs someone who can't score. That's what the NBA needs? Come on, man. You all are to blame for this. Now let's continue. It's NBA prospect. And so what happens is people, I think, all of a sudden assume that because Coleman's an NBA prospect that he's supposed to be scoring or doing some different things, Coleman is a type of player that can affect every aspect of the game. He had three blocks. Had three outstanding blocks. Played pretty good defense on Oso Iguodaro. If you guys remember, that's a Oso Iguodaro's. Now let me stop him right there again. That's just crazy talk. You're an NBA prospect, but that doesn't mean you should score or rebound or do anything to win the game. He had three blocks. Well, he had five points and five turnovers, and he shot a three at the end of the game when Luke Goody and Marcus was on the floor. That's not heads up basketball. I am sick and tired of the pandering for Coleman Hawkins. Why is there so much pandering for this player? Five turnovers, five points against Marquette, takes the three while Luke Goody is standing there, who was four for seven. That's not a good option. He's got to take it. But he had three blocks, ladies and gentlemen. That's NBA player right there. An uh, NBA player has five turnovers, five points, Takes an ill-advised three to end the game and has three blocks. Yeah, tremendous. He affected the game all right. Yeah, he does affect the game. Those five turnovers affected the game. Those five points affected the game. Him shooting that three affected the game. You're right. He does affect the game. Coleman Hawkins has zero chance at the NBA. Zero. None. Nada. Never going to happen. When will people wake up and stop with this nonsense? Tough matchup. He had... Also end up having 13 points, eight rebounds. He's just a tough, he's a tough cover. I thought Coleman did a pretty good job on him. Yes. He outscored Coleman Hawkins, out-rebounded Coleman Hawkins, but Coleman Hawkins is the NBA prospect. Get the blank out of here. But here's the thing that I want to line our nation to consider when you think about Coleman Hawkins, Okay. He's a guy that is a jack of all trades, but he's really a master of none. There's really he sucks. Call it like it is. He sucks. 
nothing that he does great, in my opinion. Or even good. So it was fascinating where I was sitting last night. I was among the crowd. Every time Coleman got the ball, people started like, ah. You know, they started freaking. Why wouldn't you go, ah? He's a turnover machine. He can't score. When Coleman gets the ball, who's gonna fit? Who, who's gonna have confidence? Who's gonna get excited? But that's your NBA prospect. Your NBA prospect is a player who, when he gets the ball, the crowd all is like they're gasping. Oh, here comes a turnover. Here comes a brick three. But he's the NBA prospect. Get out of here with that crap. Get out. Guys, he can feel that. He can sense that on the floor. He can sense the crowd's anxiety whenever he gets the basketball. So I want a line of nation to consider changing the narrative around Coleman Hawkins. Don't expect him to be this all-world playmaker guy. Yes, he can make play Oh, God forbid that the NBA player can't be an NBA player in college. God forbid that he can't score and rebound. God forbid that he can't be a big part of winning a game against a good team. Oh, that's just too much to ask. And he can feel the crowd with anxiety. Listen, Coleman Hawkins is the most weakest mentally and emotionally person I ever heard of in basketball. If this is the way it is, you hear the crowd and that bothers you? Come on, man. What kind of world are we living in where you ask the fans to be encouraging? Oh, when Coleman gets the ball, even though he's a turnover machine, he can't score, don't gasp. Um, clap, it, clap him up. Clap him up. Be supportive. Oh, come on, Coleman. You can do it, little buddy. Five turnovers. That's okay, little buddy. Hey, you can't make no three, but go ahead and take the last three in the game. Luke Goody's four and seven, but hey, you take that three. Good job, little buddy. Oh, five points. Oh, that's okay, little buddy. Oh, you did so good, Coleman. Oh, we just believe in you so much. Oh, my gosh. This is how low it's gotten. This is the world we live in. Wanting the crowd to build up a player because he sucks. Listen, you want the crowd to be behind you? Stop turning the ball over and score some points and rebound. Do something to win a game. Coleman Hawking fans are the most pathetic fans in the world. They really are. They cannot accept reality. They cannot admit that this dude sucks. Why people built him up, I'll never understand. But then again, these are the people that built up Trent Frazier as the greatest guard in the history of University of Illinois, another player who sucked. <laughs> Illinois is so bad that terrible players are prompted up, put on a pedestal. And where are those players at now? Yet Io makes it to the NBA, plays in the NBA, but where's his love? Why is he built up like a legend? Oh, well, if you make it to the NBA, you're not a legend. It's the players who don't make it. They're the legends. They're the ones that everybody puts on a pedestal. It's insane. But when he caught and shot the three, they put, they put the Atlanta up by one in the second half. Great play. He, he, he makes another pass, I believe, to a cutting Domas for a layup. Great play. These are plays that Coleman can make. But Illini Nation, when you gasp every time he gets the basketball or when you make this this sound, and, oh, he can feel that. He, you know, he, he's a he's a guy that's hard on himself. You know, when he doesn't make a play, he gets, you know, he's slapping himself. He's doing this. He's wanting as badly Illini Nation as you are. He's wanting to do well. Listen, I have no doubt he wants to do good. No doubt. But I don't give a damn if you want to be good. All with all the all the energy in the in the entire world. If you're not good, it doesn't matter. This whole idea of I want this so bad, but I suck. Oh, but I want it so bad, so cheer for me. No. Man, this has to be based on performance. 
This has to be based on results. This isn't a participation trophy uh, award thing. Oh, you gave it your best shot, little Coleman. Too bad you suck, but you gave it your best. Man, listen. Like I said, you people who built up Coleman Hawkins, you are the same ones that make him cry at night. Because when you see him, you have to be honest. You do have anxiety. You do gasp. You do expect a turnover. You do expect a brick. Because that's the player he is. No one, and I mean no one, watches Coleman get the ball and gets excited. Matter of fact, when, when has there been an NBA player a college player who will be in the NBA, when's the last time we've had an NBA player who, when he got the ball, everyone was like, oh, man, he got the ball. Oh, my God, he has the ball. That doesn't happen to NBA talent. When NBA talent gets the ball, you get excited. When A.O. got the ball, he was a second-round NBA pick. When he got the ball, was the crowd going, oh, my gosh, A.O. has the ball. Oh, here we go. We suck. No. No. If he was an NBA talent, he would get the ball, the crowd would be excited, and he would deliver. He would do something. Coleman sucks. Embrace it. I want you to grab it with both hands and hold it tight. Say it out loud in a sentence. Coleman Hawkins sucks, and I accept it. Come on. But it doesn't really help that whenever he gets the basketball, there's a there's a collective gas. And I would I was, you know, because I'm usually down on the floor calling the games, that I don't get the I don't get this experience. It was fascinating to sit amongst the Illini fans to see the response and the reaction to whenever Coleman gets the ball. So I want to change the narrative. I want you guys to consider changing the narrative around Coleman. He's not gonna be a 20 point 10 rebound a night score. He's not what are you talking about? He's an NBA player. So what was it? 6'10? 6'9, 6'10, 6'11? NBA player? He can't get 10 rebounds in a damn game? Get out of here with that crap. He can't score 20 with his length and size. He's an NBA player. Man, I, I, dude, this is insane. He's an NBA player. If he gets five points and six rebounds, that's a great that's a great game. That's an NBA player stat line. Man, this is this is really reaching hard. Listen, as a fan, I am I can imagine you have something called vision. I, I I'm, I'm imagining everyone there can see. And when you watch Coleman with the ball, there's over a 90% chance that it's either going to result in a turnover or a brick. Hence why the crowd goes, oh my gosh, he's got the ball. At the end of the game, when Coleman took that three, who in the crowd was believing he was going to make it? But who in the crowd was saying, why in the hell didn't Luke Goody get that three? Come on, man. That, that type of production. That's not Coleman. But what he's going to do, he's going to get you five assists. He's going to get you three blocks. Uh, he might get you two or three steals. Let me see. Uh, no, no steals last night, but he had three assists, six rebounds, three blocks, five points. So he was two of them. Oh, Oh, those, those are a stat line of an NBA player if I ever heard them. Oh, th th that's a stat line of a player who helped his team um, try to win a game. Man, get out of here. The dude is a senior. This ain't no freshman. Dude, a freshman should put up those kind of numbers. Not no senior. Not no player who's supposed to be in the NBA. Man, come on, man. Man, this is reaching. This is reaching deep. With, with both hands. Just say it, Stephen. Say it, Stephen. Say Coleman Hawkins is not an NBA player. 
And the truth of the matter is he sucks. Just, just say it. Say it with me, Stephen. Say Coleman Hawkins sucks. Don't be talking about three assists, three blocks, and six rebounds in 30 minutes of play, five points and five turnovers. Say it, Stephen. Say Coleman Hawkins sucks. Five from the field, one of five from three. So don't expect Coleman Hawkins to be Terrence Shannon. He's not going to have that kind of production. Terrence Shannon is a gifted player and, you know, just a, a, and a, a determination to really do well. I thought Terrence was outstanding last night. Yes, he five turnovers. Outstanding? Outstanding? What the hell were you watching last night if you said T Terrence Shannon Jr. was outstanding? The hell he was. He wasn't outstanding. If he was outstanding, they win the game. Man, listen, I know you're former Illini. I know you do announcing, but you have a YouTube channel. You can tell the truth. T Shannon Jr. did not have a outstanding game last night. Not even close. Come on, man. But it's November. It's early. But Terrence is outstanding. Don't expect Coleman Hawkins to be Terrence Shannon. That's not what he is. He's a he's a jack of all trades. So he's going to affect all parts of the game. But when you gasp, stop, stop. In that game against Marquette, what did he do? He he. Only thing he affected was them losing. He helped them lose. Man, you know what this sounds like? This almost sounds like he's saying he's Draymond Green. I can't stand Draymond Green. And Draymond Green proved without Steph Curry and Klay Thompson on the court that he was worthless and a nobody. And he sure did prove that. He proved it. Anybody can get off with, with Steph Curry and Klay Thompson on the court and, he, and then Kevin Durant. But when they were all gone and it was just him, he put up garbage numbers, horribly bad numbers. He proved what he really was. But this is what it sounds like to me. Like Coleman Hawkins is a Draymond Green. Draymond Green, as much as I don't like him, he absolutely poops on Coleman Hawkins. You want to talk about a jack-of-all-trade. Draymond Green, when he was at Michigan State, man, oh, oh, my. Somebody help me. Somebody help me out there. Draymond Green, as much as I can't stand him, he poops all over Coleman Hawkins. It's not even close. But that's what he sounds like he's trying to compare him to. A jack-of-all-trades. Somebody can rebound. Play defense, score, get some assist. But I'm telling you right now, no, that that that's fake news. Collectively, when he gets the basketball, ladies and gentlemen, don't you think that's gonna have an effect on him? Like how? Who in the world is in the game listening to the crowd, how they react to you? How do you have the time? When you're playing basketball or football. Or baseball, how do you have the time to listen to the crowd? You should be oblivious to the crowd. My gosh, how many of you have a wife or a girlfriend? Do you listen to everything she says all the time? Or do you just have it going one ear and out the other? And every so often you just say, yeah, uh-huh, that's true. Come on now. When you're on that court, you're on that field, you don't hear people talking unless you want to. Now, if you want to, you can. Just like if you want to listen to your wife talk, you can. It's a choice. So I've never heard anything like this in my life. I've never heard like anything like this in my life. Asking the fans. <laughs> to stop, <laughs> stop, stop being discouraged when Coleman gets the ball. <laughs> Be encouraging when he gets the ball. 
You know, when he gets the ball, build him up. Say encouraging thing. You can do it, Coleman. Yeah, little buddy. My gosh, dude, this is this is unbelievable. Oh my gosh, and he's going to the NBA. <laughs> That's crazy. No way. No way. All right, let's just go ahead and um, see what else he says. Can, can you imagine that that place was sold out last night? That was 15,000, 16,000 people. And if there are 4,000 people, <gasps> and, oh, every time he gets the basketball and he's 22 years old, what do you think is going to happen? What do I think is going to happen? I think he's going to do what everyone else does, play basketball. Wait a minute now. So when he goes on the road and the you're on the road and you get booed the whole game, that affects you? That makes you cry? That will determine if you play good or not? Dude, that's crazy to suggest. If you're a player and – your ability to play is determined by the crowd. How how much are they cheering for you? How much are they booing or whatever? You got mental and emotional problems. You need you need to get help. You need to quit basketball and go get help. That's crazy stuff. Could you imagine? I'm sure some of you have played organized sports. Were you ever in a situation where the crowd affected you? Like, I, I never heard of such a thing. All right. This is just some, <clears throat> this is some new stuff. This is new stuff right here that needs to go away. Um. And anyway, I'm, you, you can tell I'm in a hotel room and my <laughs> voice carries and it's like a, they couldn't hear me <laughs> anyway. So a lot of nation just want to come on here and say, look, be encouraged by what you saw yesterday, last night. I'm not. That's an outstanding performance by Illinois. That's the number. Outstanding performance by Illinois. They didn't score a point in the last 16 minutes of the game. Or whatever. What was it? They scored one point or they didn't score. Or they made one basket in 16 minutes or something. One basket made in the last 16 minutes or no no points. I think it was no point score in the last 16 minutes. More turnovers than assist. 25% from three. They had an outstanding game. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my. You're killing me, Steven. You're killing me. That wasn't an outstanding game. Four team in the country. So if you go back to Bartle's breakdown on Monday, I picked Marquette to win this game. Not that I'm an Illini hater, nothing like that. It's nothing like that. It's, I'm an analyst. You picked Marquette because you know Coleman Hawkins sucks. That's why you did it. Period. Listen, Marquette is a nothing team. Are you kidding me? Number four team, my butt. Illinois should have beat that team. But Illinois has serious problems. Coaching problems, player problems. They can't get out of their own way. And that's just problems that they have to deal with. So Marquette is not some great team that Illinois could never beat. Get the freak out of here. Illinois should have beat that team. But they, like I said, they got their own problems that they won't fix because Brad Underwood can't coach. That's just facts. But get out of here with that crap. I'll end with this. And you guys can take my word for it. College basketball is trash. There's no great teams. Not one. The team that won it last year the team that won it the year before that, forgettable teams. Absolutely forgettable. There's no great teams, period. College basketball is trash. It's going to stay trash. You know, plenty of reasons for it. NIL money, players leaving early, 
players transferring, some players going overseas and, and just playing for money right away, more money than NIL money. So plenty of reasons why college basketball is trash and it's going to be trash. But Coleman Hawkins sucks. Shame on you people for building him up because you're watching him crumble before you. And it's no wonder Brad Underwood can't say his player sucks because he knows he'll cry. <laughs> Unbelievable. 22-year-old senior, and he cries at night because the crowd boos him. Insane. Let me know your thoughts and comments.